How many drivers should a speaker have? Okay. Ernie in El Paso, Texas wants to know, and he says, hey Paul, I have a do-it-yourself speaker question. I was thinking of trying to build some full range, sorry, speakers separating the extreme low frequencies to a sub. Good. We like subs. We really like subs. I recently saw you talking about using multiple drivers to get better sound. Is it better to have two mid-ranges to split the mid-range such that one covers the top half and the mid-range and the second cover the lower half, then doing the same to the tweeters? What, what's the difference between all of this? Okay, good question. We are um, here in our, our new little speaker lab, which is kind of cool. Uh, I should, yeah, well, anyway, it's our little microphone. This is the Sprout speaker that we're working on. Let's see if I can get this off here. Yeah, I guess I can't. Anyway, this is a, that's a nice little grill over the woofer. There's a little six and a half woofer in here and a tweeter. So this is what we call a classic two-way. Now what Phil is talking about is doing something larger and then splitting up the frequencies even more. And well, the next step up from this is a three-way to where we would have a tweeter. And the tweeter, of course, handles frequency, say, from two kilohertz on up to 20 kilohertz. And then the woofer, in this case, takes over from 2 kilohertz and goes all the way down to as low as this woofer can go, at, let's call it 60, 60 hertz, 60 cycles. Um, if we wanted to add a mid-range, extend the size of the box up a little bit, put a mid-range driver in, now this speaker maybe is going to go up to still maybe as low as 2K, but from 2K down to, oh, you know, 500 hertz or so, somewhere in that range, we would have another driver that would pick up and then the woofer would, would pick up from that point on down and giving less uh, of, of a job for the woofer to do. So the reason that we separate those out is if you look at a woofer, uh, just take a woofer for example, it, it can actually go out to 20 kilohertz but there's all kinds of resonances and reasons that you don't want it to go out there. So when we look at the measurement for a woofer, we see a, a nice linear flat area, and then as the frequency goes up and as the frequency goes down, we get these, these wild looking uh, anomalies depending on the woofer and the quality of the woofer. And that's where we wanna get out of the woofer, as we say. So then we cross it over and get out so we don't reproduce those nasty areas. Well, that's gonna leave a hole. Now we have to fill it with another driver who is better suited for that range of frequencies. And you can, you can extend this to a five-way, a six-way, a 10-way. You wanna be a little careful doing that because every time we cross over, we're, we're overlapping. We're causing phase problems. It's, it, it's the worst part of a speaker happens to be the crossover. And I know there's people who are gonna say, well, then, then let's just go for single drivers. Well, they have their problems too. And we've talked about those before. Single driver speakers, they, they have um, uh, lobing and beaming and high frequent Doppler. As, high, as the woofer moves in and out slowly, it's also moving quickly and you get a type of distortion that we'd rather not have. But going to the opposite extreme of multiple drivers, three-way, five-way, 10-way systems, you, you then get into the other side of that double-edged sword. You get into a problem where the crossovers itself themselves start to, uh, to cause phase problems and timing problems. And then you could say, well, then I could get rid of those by using DSP. And yes, you could. DSP, di digital signal processing. You could, uh, uh, you could make linear phase. You could do all kinds of things. But now you have a rather complicated active speaker that if you're trying to get into the market, not many people really want to buy. So speakers are not easy. But yes, you could break that into as many as you want. I would just urge being conservative, urge you to be conservative. Um, crossovers at the point where the crossover takes over, that's where you usually have your toughest 
time as a designer getting it to sound smooth and right as one rolls off and the other takes over. Those are difficult points and really hard to do. And the art of these speakers is all in the crossover. And the more crossovers you have, the tougher your problem is going to be to make it sound right. Simple is better. Okay. Thanks. Great question. Good luck with your project. All right. Bye. Thank you.